Hacking. One of the skills of all time. But what does hacking actually look like? How do you become a pro hacker? Buckle up, Buttercup, because this video is your ultimate guide to the world of hacking. Ever since life existed on this wonderful planet, hacking has always been a problem. Hey bro, check out this epic website I made. So you wanna hack someone? Well, you've come to the right video. Let's say you wanna hack your girlfriend's Discord because you think she's cheating. Well, you have two ways to find out the truth. One, hack her account and read the DMs. Or two, check to see if she's in the Among Us server. We all know what goes down in there. Okay, so she's not in the server, thank goodness, but you still wanna be sure. It's hacking time. Think of her Discord account like a house. There are many ways inside. You could go through the window, up the toilet, dig a tunnel underground, or use TNT to blast a hole through the side of the wall. But why do all that when you could just walk through the front door? Hacking is like ice cream. There are many different flavors. But the best flavor is vanilla, also known as the social engineering attack. Okay, that made no sense, but what makes this attack special is anyone, even you, can do it. And the best part is, the victim never sees it coming. Step one is to learn as much as you can about the victim. The more you know about your target, the easier it is to gain their trust. There are many ways to find information on your target. You could pretend to be an e-girl and ask a lot of questions, or you could literally sit outside their home and go through their trash. That's right, going through someone's trash is considered an actual hacking technique. So if you're ever caught going through someone's garbage, you can just say, I'm hacking, bro. Don't worry about it. Okay, so let's gather some information on Skittle Chan here. It looks like she has an Instagram and uh, whatever whatever this is here. Let's check her Instagram and see if we can find out what she likes. Okay, it looks like she's a fan of BTS. In fact, her entire account is BTS. All right guys, so Skittle Chan is no longer my girlfriend, but I want to hack her anyways. And now that I know her greatest desire in life, it's time to make a move. You know what? Screw you. You don't deserve Wi-Fi, you sussy baka. We're gonna shut down Skittle Chan's internet with an epic DDoS attack. You've probably heard about DDoSing before, but what you might not know is how powerful it actually is. DDoS attacks have taken down entire companies. Back in 2014, a group called Lizard Squad ruined Christmas by taking down Xbox Live and PlayStation Network at the same time, forcing us gamers to spend time with family. Like, what the heck? I couldn't even play my PlayStation. But anyways, DDoSing works by flooding a network with so much traffic, it shuts down. All you really need is the victim's IP address. And I'm sure you guys know what an IP is, right? Like IP grabbers. Basically, if you click on an IP grabber, you're toast. The hacker can literally kill you by turning off your internet. A fate worse than death. So we've got this IP grabber link right here. Let's send it to Skittle Chan and see if she clicks it. Guys, she clicked it. Oh my. What an idiot. Skittle Chan, you are dead. And send you to the stone. <laughs> Wait, guys. I think I entered my own IP. Wait. No, no, no. SQL injection is one of the OG hacking methods, and it's still very popular. 
The attack works by entering malicious code into a website's text box, like a search bar. It's basically like putting an iPhone into a microwave. Like, you're not supposed to do it, but if there's nothing stopping you, the website will then run the code and do whatever you tell it to do. Usually this works on websites built by someone who doesn't care about security, or it was built in the 1900s, like every single university website. And that's because these sites don't check to see if what you entered is code, right? Like they didn't think of that when they built the website. So I'm here at the Yale School of Art website. This is probably the worst site I've ever seen. I mean, it's just asking to get hacked. So we have a text box right here, a little search bar, and now all we need to do is paste in some code. And what this should do is delete the entire student database. And there we go. All right, guys, so I didn't actually hack Yale University and post it on YouTube for you all to see. That would be very illegal. But you know what's not illegal? Getting revenge. And we are going to get revenge on Skittle Chan for outsmarting us earlier. <laughs> Sequel injection time. <laughs> Dang it, I almost forgot. This attack doesn't work on sites that were built properly, like Discord. So to get into her account and read those DMs, we need a better way. This is a very common attack, and it's really simple. Instead of getting little Skittlechan to give us her password, or hacking into Discord itself, why don't we just try every single password combination until one works? This is called brute forcing, and it's really useful in Wi-Fi hacking, which is one of my favorite hacking techniques. In fact, let me tell you how to do it right now. For educational purposes. Okay guys, what I'm about to teach you is an actual working trick to hack into most Wi-Fi networks. Please only try this at home, if you have one. If you're homeless, I guess you have nothing to lose, so... Oh, I see how it is, Grandma. You want me to touch grass. But why would I do that when I can just... Okay guys, so I'm sitting outside of Skittle Chan's house with this massive antenna right here. Let's see if we can get her Wi-Fi password so we can spy on the network and read all the DMs. Listen kid, before you enter the dark world of hacking, you need to understand there are two types of hackers in this world. Responsible hackers, who work for companies and make them more secure, and hackers. These are the people who hack things without permission. They break into banks, Roblox accounts, steal credit cards, Robux, V-Bucks, which is totally not cool. Said no one. Alright, so we all know why you want to learn hacking, bro. You want to do some sus things, so you need to make sure you don't get caught. Step one, find a dark abandoned warehouse to hack from. Step two, get some sunglasses and a hoodie. And finally, step three, cover your camera. And now, it's heckin' time. Okay, but like, you're probably wondering, how does someone actually like hack an entire bank? or do something huge like that. I mean, it's one thing to hack your girlfriend and read her DMs, or get the McDonald's Wi-Fi password, and it's another to break into Bank of America and set your balance to 100 billion. Pro hacking. The movies make it look like magic. The nerds make it look like something only smart people can do. But the truth is, even you can become 
a pro hacker. I'm just kidding. To be honest, if you really want to become the best of the best, you really do either have to learn to code or know a few things about computers. Let's say you want to break into Taco Bell and steal the secret recipe to why the food is so bad. When you kick down the door and walk inside, the recipe is probably locked inside a 1,000 pound steel vault that you have to open. Maybe you could get lucky and an earthquake hits and a, a nuclear bomb falls on top of it and it swings open or something. I mean, a lot of hackers do get lucky, like they're just in the bathroom and they see on the wall, there's like a sticky note with Joe Biden's password written on it. But what you really want is to be an expert at how vaults work, because the best way to break something is to learn how it's built. You realize all the things that could go wrong all of the weak spots, and the same is true with computers. But if you don't wanna learn coding or anything like that, you can still be a great hacker. Some of the best social engineering hackers just know a lot about humans and how they work. And in many cases, that's the best way to hack huge targets like Taylor Swift. Sim swapping is one of the most simple but dangerous hacks, and it still happens today. Let me tell you a little secret. You know your phone number? It's actually not yours. It's owned by a little company, and that little company sometimes will give your phone number to a hacker. That's because the hacker is an imposter. They pretend to be you. Hello? Hey, my name is Taylor Swift. I uh, dropped my phone off the uh, Empire State Building. Oh no, that's not very good. Yeah, I, I think I hit someone in the head. I heard an ambulance go by. Uh, uh, I sure hope the phone is okay. What? But anyways, I need you to transfer my number to my new phone. Sure, I can do that for you. And just like that, we have full control over Taylor Swift's phone number. I can literally reset all her passwords using the phone number, and anyone can do this trick. You don't even have to know how to code or anything. Obviously, it's, it's very legal, so don't try it. I mentioned a lot of attacks in this video, but to be honest, that's just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to hacking. There's a lot of tools out there, but the video is getting kind of long, and it's probably going to take me like... 50 hours to edit. I really love this topic. I'm not the best hacker on earth or anything. Uh, I'm just telling you what I know. If you decide to become a pro hacker, please don't break the law. Or if you do, don't tell anyone where you got this information. But regardless, guys, I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day. I know this is a very random video, um, but I just wanted to make it. If it does well, I'll probably make more. Or if not, I'll just make Discord videos until the actual heat death of the universe. <laughs>